All right, you guys. We are digging into a viewer requested topic, and it is around cell phones. So I'm very excited. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm not digging like into my normal cell phone technology data, but we had quite a few people ask, okay? Okay. What is a cell dump? What is a cell phone tower dump? And what we're talking about specifically here is in relation to the uh, Brett Payne's Exhibit A, PCA. On page 11, it starts saying, as part of this investigation, law enforcement obtained search warrants to determine cellular devices that utilize cellular towers in close proximity to the King Road residence on November 3rd, 2022, between 3 a.m., and 5 a.m. So we'll start there. All right. Got it. What they're talking about is what is called a cell tower data dump. Now, this should not be confused with a cell phone data dump. Okay. I think a lot of people out there, uh, and I've talked about this quite a few times before, that, um, for whatever reason, okay, I think it's because we're all moving into a, a, a more progressive technological era. And I think people, a lot of people out there in the world feel like they should know more about technology than they know, right? So a lot of times you, I, I've encountered in my experience in network technology where you have these people that are afraid to admit that they don't know exactly what these things mean, right? Mm -hmm. Where they will just read something like Brett Payne's Exhibit A and 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 try to piece it together like the human mind does. You know, when there's something we don't completely understand, we guesstimate, right? Uh, but when we're talking about like forensic science, digital evidence, and data. Uh, it's not a great thing to guesstimate. You know, mm, I do no. it myself. I'm not calling anyone out here. If anything, I'm talking about myself when I'm reading things. You know, I think the story I just did, uh, there was a lot of guesstimation work in there that I then had to go and figure out and confirm because, look, I'm not a DNA expert. I got to figure this stuff out as I go. You know what I mean? Even though we have learned a lot on it. But with technology, with networks, uh, with network solutions, uh, cellular networks specifically, towers, things of that nature. Um, I got that stuff down. Um, now, what is uh, a cell phone data dump, right? Because a cell dump is a, a super generic term. And one word changes everything, okay? So we'll start with... What is a cell phone data dump? Now, when a police officer or in an investigation, you read something that says a cell phone data dump, okay? That means that they have these, these little hardware boxes, okay? Let's, my ADD toy here, okay? My ADD toy here. So they have these little boxes and they could literally be this big, you guys. All right. And uh, they are, uh, there's a whole bunch of different brands, but one commonly known brand is, is called uh, Celebrite, Celebrite Solutions. And what it does is you take this little box and you plug one end into the uh, computer you plug another end into a phone and it forcibly transfers all the data out of the phone. By data, I mean pictures, uh, phone calls, uh, emails, uh, everything. It doesn't matter what it is. Essentially, it has the power to mirror that phone. That's something that we've talked about quite a few times when we're talking in relation to the victim's phones and why they haven't given that information back to the families. Either A, there's some evidentiary findings in there 
or B, it's planning on being used uh, in the case as, uh, you know, some some kind of imagery tactic to use in front of the jury. I don't know. Uh, but they haven't given it back to him. I don't know why. But that is a cell phone data dump. Good? Mm -hmm. Okay, now we add one word. What is a cell phone tower data dump? One word uh, changes everything. All right? What a cell phone tower data dump is, which isn't allowed in all states or has very specific specifications around it, is law enforcement going to a cell tower owner or plural if there's multiple uh, cell phone companies on there, which there was in this case, and says, hey, we need every phone that's connected to this tower from this time to this time or towers if they're targeting multiple um and what that's going to give is they're going to get a report back and they're going to see a few things on there they're going to be able to see the serial number of the device the sim number of well not always the serial number but definitely the sim card number it depends on if you're using a gsm network or a cdma which i won't get into that right now but um they'll see the sim card number uh, and uh, they'll see the strength of the device, like how good of a signal connection it has. Essentially, they're asking for the 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 starting report to build a cast report, but they're asking for every phone that was connected to it. Why so many states have pushed back and fought against this, including the ACLU? You know, the ACLU came out and was like, this needs to stop because... Um, you're asking for all this data and you're looking for one person or a couple people, but we have examples here of a robbery that happened, um, where you pulled 1200 people's phone data to get a few people. Well, where is all that other data from those other phones? And how do we know that these police officers are securing it? Hmm. You know what I mean? We're the owners of our data. We are the owners of our data. I know that's debated. I get it. And there's a fine line between what is vague enough to not identify somebody versus what's too much to easily identify somebody. And that's where that argument is. Well, in Idaho, clearly, if they're doing this, uh, they don't have any laws against it. Surprise. Um, but uh, so they effectively were able to get a cell phone tower data dump here between three and five, like we just read. November 13th, 2022, between 3 a.m. and 5 a.m. So they got every phone connected to that tower between those times. Which is like the whole college. Probably. Probably. I'm assuming, okay, and I'm I'm assuming here that the tower they targeted, or maybe plural, maybe it is the two that overlap the one one two two, um, but I would think they would prioritize the Theophilus Tower. Yeah, because that's the closest, in my opinion, that would be the one that has the five G small cell tower data system, right for. Uh, an ultra wide band, ultra capacities to hold a whole bunch of people and give really fast download speeds. Why that's important is because the higher the capacity or band or shorter the wave, the more reliable it is like for where someone is at at the home. You know what I mean? It's still when I say more reliable, I mean multiple square miles reliable down to like you know, some football fields or more, or, you know, a quarter of the size of that town. So, which is not super precise. No, it is the opposite of precise. No, yeah, it's not precise at all. It's not precise at all. When but it lets you know they're in the general area and, and of he, Moscow. Here's a really important thing to note, too, you guys, is that um, this is a college town. Okay. Do you know how many people were in that general area? You know, the Theophilus Tower and actual student living is within there. Yeah. Like, do you know how many thousands of people they, they had to go through to see who was in that general area? And they didn't even find Koberger. 
No, and they didn't find Koberger. And that's what I was going to get to here to read the rest of it. So let's let's read the rest of this and oh, dig into sorry, it. Sorry, right? I, I so, jumped ahead. Sorry. <laughs> I'll start from the beginning. As part of this investigation, law enforcement obtained search warrants to determine cellular devices that utilize cellular towers in close proximity to the King Road residence on November 13th, 2022, between 3 a.m. and 5 a.m. Important part. After determining that Koberger was associated to both the 2015 White Elantra and the 8458 phone, investigators reviewed these search warrant returns. A quarry of the 8458 phone in these returns did not show the 8458 phone utilizing cellular tower resources in close proximity to the King Road residence between 3 a.m. and 5 a.m. So, couple questions here all right the way this is worded i think it is intentionally confusing right yeah because why would you make it seem like you're hot on the trail of somebody that owns a 2015 white elantra and owns an 8458 phone but in doing so you decided to submit a request for a tower cell tower data dump for hundreds or thousands of cell phones that are in the general area. A cell phone tower data dump is what you do when you're in the beginning part of your investigation and you do not have a suspect. If you did have a suspect, you would be able to very easily look up their phone number, right? Because in this same exhibit A and PCA, it says in here that Due to a traffic stop where Brian Koberger shared his 8458 number, they were easily able to identify Brian Koberger tied to this 8458 number. So then, why is there a tower data dump at all? You got me. What day did they put the search warrant in, does it say? Or did they not specify? No, it doesn't specify right here. Of I think. Course I not. think later... In this, it specifies, uh, and I don't remember when exactly that was, um, but it 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 leaves to the question: Why is there in this paragraph here a double negative? Right. So what I mean by that is, in one hand, they're saying we did a cell phone tower data dump. And due to the outcome of that data, we have evidence proving Koberger's the guy. It's our evidence supports he's the guy because he's not there. That's literally what it's saying. Yeah. Then that evidence supports 300 million other U.S. Americans. That's insane. Crazy. Yeah. Absolutely insane here. When you're looking at this singular piece of evidence, but you know, everybody's argument, it's the cumulative amount of uh, evidence. And what about the DNA? Yeah. My issue is that every piece of evidence, even if you want to talk about it's the abundance. You know, it's all of the things stacked together that paint the picture. But if you break down each of those and there's issues in each of them, then can you still have that same argument that it's the accumulation? Yeah. I. If each one is flawed. No, no, you can't. No, and that falls into like some of those logical fallacies that uh, I find all over this. And this is one story that I I almost dug into further, um, and uh, I ended up not. But uh, you know, it. So this is interesting, right? So they did this cell phone tower data dump, and they're saying in this PCA the fact that Brian Koberger is not found between three to five is evidence, okay? So I started digging into this more, and I came up with 
a realization. Do you remember seeing this map? Yep. What do you think this map is? This is the map of Brian Koberger leaving the crime scene and going down to Lewiston, making that loop back up home to Pullman. I don't believe that's what this map is. I believe this map shows the connection that they have with the cell phone towers, with the breaks in the cell phone towers where they lose connection. Okay. I think in all these spots, they're losing connection with his device. Okay. Now, what's interesting here is we have a blue line, right? How many times in the PCA do we hear that we see Brian Koberger for what appears to be heading towards Moscow? Yeah. Okay. So, assuming they do they don't have the evidence to say Brian Koberger headed to Moscow at this time. The wording is slanted in a way where I don't believe, and I've said this from the beginning off the evidence of the cell towers, watch this video, you guys, but I don't believe that there is any connection crossing that highway that connects Pullman to Moscow. Yeah, they said there wasn't. Right. So that's further evidence here. They said he started on some road, I can't remember, and then his phone cuts off. They're talking about down here. So everywhere there's a break, I can almost guarantee you there is a break in cell phone coverage. So look at this. Yeah, that's obvious. Like... That's why there is no line going to Moscow. It's obvious that is the connection, but that is the map. They're saying he traveled, that that's where he went that night. I, I understand that, but this is, this is a possible route based off of cellular device location. Okay. Okay. So what's interesting is this blue line. What does that blue line mean? There is no cell coverage right here. Okay. None. So what? That's where they think he went. That's where they think he went. Correct. They're just assuming. They're assuming. I think it's really important to be able to highlight where these breaks are. I think it's equally as important to highlight that they don't talk about these breaks in coverage in the document. Wait a minute. Can I, is wait a minute. They're literally showing connection while he's still in Moscow. I, I thought they said he was already on the interstate, but when his phone turned on at like literally an hour later or something like that. I'm telling you, this does not make sense. It doesn't make sense because they have their red triangle here. I think this is to identify his home base. Okay. Yeah, yep. Then you have him going south here. Right, going south, then there's a break in coverage right here. And then he continues south, a break in coverage. He continues south and southeast, break in coverage. Then he works up north, break in coverage. I think this blue line could identify the possibility of him uh, returning in the morning. Or do you remember in the PCA, in the portion that says, uh, hang on here. Where it's important to notate that uh, further review indicated that the eight four five eight phone utilized cellular resources on November thirteenth, twenty twenty two, that are consistent with eight four five eight phone leaving the area of Koberger residence at approximately 9 a.m. and traveling to Moscow, Idaho. Specifically, the 8458 phone utilized cellular resources that would provide coverage to the King Road residence between 9.12 a.m. and 9.21 a.m. The 8458 phone next utilized cellular resources that are consistent with the 8458 phone traveling back to the area of the Koberger residence, arriving the area at approximately 
32. Then after this, it says investigators found that the 8458 phone did not connect or did connect to a cell tower that provides service to Moscow on November 14th, 2022. But investigators do not believe the 8458 phone was in Moscow on that date. The 8458 phone has not connected to any tower that provides service to Moscow since that date. Wait, so are they saying he returned on the 13th and the 14th? They're saying that he his phone connected to these this tower and he wasn't in Moscow. Okay. Strange. Yeah, I mean people it's have said strange that. Strange with this I understand people have said that. But do you understand like how unlikely that is with this gap in coverage right here? Yeah. They're saying this cell tower that is covering it the covers one, one, two, a tiny. Two it's so tiny of an area too. Then why are they trying to correlate that it's being picked up here? This blue line is associated with this blue triangle. They're also saying that on the 14th, he connected to this tower and was not in Moscow. Yeah. Then how are they leaning on the reliability of Brian Koberger being in this area? Ever. Ever. And what's important, like why this map is important, is because this blue triangle correlates with this blue line here. So if it did this on the 14th, and he never even entered Idaho, the fact that they're highlighting that on here, that it, sh that it shows... That he connected to a cell tower that provides service to Moscow, but investiga investigators do not believe he was in Moscow, shows the unreliability of this tower. Therefore, proving that there is only one tower. One. One. Tower. And why it's randomly connecting to phones all the way out here? I couldn't tell you. I don't know. I have no idea. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't Weird. make sense. So they're saying he returned to the 13th and the 14th? No. They're saying he connected to a tower on the 14th I know, I know. and was never there. I know, but so are they saying he did return on the 13th then? They're saying that they saw his phone connect to a tower. Yeah, I know. The There's 13th. two separate statements you're, there. Right. You're picking up what I'm saying. What they're saying is what they saw on the 13th and what they saw on the 14th is the same thing. But on the 13th, they're saying he went there. On the 14th, they're saying he didn't. That's so weird. So what's the evidence proving it? What is the evidence? Because we're looking at a gap in coverage. That's what's important here. This giant gap in coverage. Which they're trying to say is proof that he turned off his phone to avoid detection. No. I do not think that's what they're saying. I think there's a gap in coverage Yeah, here. but Brett Payne said that... His phone turned off at a certain time when they believe he was headed to Moscow. And in his experience and training, you know, individuals turn off their phones to avoid detection while they're committing a crime. No, he's saying that as a reason why he wasn't picked up on the data dump. Not to prove he was there. I think they're leaning on the whatever pictures they have of whatever uh, car they have or whatever. But. The data dump doesn't support the theory. Right. So if you're an investigator, you've got to explain that, right? They don't know where Koberger is. They just know he's not there based on his phone. Well, I can tell you why there's no service here. Look, like 
there is a gap right outside of Moscow here. And there is a major tower right here. There is a massive gap here. Hmm. I'm going to, I'll dig into the towers again. Like I will dig into them. But when we looked into this, what's interesting is the only tower that went over here was the tower that was on top of the water tower. The Theophilus tower wasn't even pointed that direction. No, it points straight down towards 1122 correct. King Road and the campus. It doesn't go east or west at all. That's correct. It yeah. literally just points south, like straight down. That's correct. And it, it only covers like that area of that neighborhood and campus. Like that is it. It's such a small area that it covers. Correct. There, There's so many little like Easter eggs in this cell phone data statement. I, I'm telling you, almost every single one of these I have questions about. It doesn't align with my knowledge and experience of cell phone networks. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. None of it. I mean, they got DNA and pictures of his car, right? They don't need it. I don't know. I mean, there that's a pretty big claim, claiming that, uh, you know, members of CAST are certified with the FBI to prevent, provide expert testimony in the field of historical CSLI and are required to pass extensive training that includes both written and practical examinations prior to being certified with CAST, as well as the completion of yearly certification requirements. Additionally, the FBI CAST SA that I consulted with has over 15 years of experience. Okay, hold That's a wait, lot. Wait. That's as much as you. <laughs> no, no. Wait. 15 years of experience as a federal law enforcement officer. Wait, that's what he said? Yes. He didn't say specifically in cell phones? No. Which includes six years with the FBI. It doesn't even say how many years experience with cast he has. From the information provided by CAST, I was able to determine estimated locations for the 8458 phone from November 12th, 2022 to November 13th, 2022, the time period authorized by the court. You know, it's a, you know, it's super interesting. What? You know, it's super interesting. What? So here's another thing. He just said in his statement that he pulled a cell phone tower dump, right? He, he pulled that information. But here he's saying that from information provided by CAST, I was able to determine estimated locations for the 8458 phone. So who pulled this data? Who had the warrant? to pull the cell phone tower dump or was he given it by cast he just says right here that cast is the reason he was able to determine estimated locations for 8458 estimated locations i mean don't we have a we have an AT&T search warrant yeah there's search warrants for cell data from uh -huh. phone companies. Yeah. I need I haven't looked over them, but, but I, that doesn't clarify like anything that's being talked about here. Yeah, I assume there when has he, to be a warrant for the cell tower data yeah. dump. Police can't just go and get that. I know that's what I'm saying. We have warrants for well, the we, companies, but I mean I like I said, I haven't looked over them, but I assumed when he said that he did it with information provided by Cass that he means they literally told him how to triangulate and that's, estimate the location. That's literally what is said here. Yeah. That is what's said. 
I'm just trying to understand, like, who provided this information? Like, what do you mean by that? Like, are you saying Cass gave him data on Koberger's phone? Data on Koberger? No. Like, no, data, the network data for Koberger's phone. That's what I'm asking. That is what is not clear here. That is what a judge, a, a, a judge should have been asking these things. Because these are, these are, again, like a double negative situation. Okay, you got the, the cell phone tower data dump and you were able to effectively, like, you know, identify where Koberger was at all these times. Gotcha. Um, then later, at a later time, you were getting cast reports from a cast officer with an un uh, unknown amount of experience as a cast essay, but 15 years of law enforcement experience. Tell me how that applies. I have no idea. Um, law enforcement officers aren't like cell net et network, whatever experts. Yeah. They're I, not. I, yeah. I have no idea how that applies, but whatever I was trying to say, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it, that doesn't make sense. You're no, right. it doesn't make any sense. The whole thing, that's what I'm saying. Like, through the PCA, like, this is old news. Yes, this is old news. But how many people have identified where it feels fabricated through the whole thing? Almost, almost anyone could just be like, hey, Brendan, pick that one. Tell me what doesn't make sense in that one. And I could probably find something like that's how it feels. That's how unreliable it feels. It does feel that unreliable. And with the cell phone data, I just happen to know that stuff, you know? Yeah. Eat up that word salad. <laughs> but I'm curious what you guys think about it. Do you think we're on to something here? Um, something doesn't add up. It never did. I'm curious if they're going to make it add up in court. I mean, I want to know who the cast officer is. Same. I want to know how you have, uh, what was it called? A, uh, a draft or a draft cast report. Like, what does that mean? What is a draft cast report? I, I, I don't know. Does that mean you have drafted points on a map? Does that mean that? This is, hey, this this information shouldn't be taken as truth. It's just to show you what I could give you probably maybe at some later date. Like, that's terrifying. Th that's insane. Because I can tell you just off the map that you provided how you do not have enough coverage to triangulate a cell phone. I can show you that. Just look at this map. All those holes are a problem. Big time. Yeah. But anyways, let me know what you guys think. We'll be talking about this on the True Crime Talk Show further. And we can go into more questions, more details, and more fun tech fun facts. Fun tech fun facts? Exactly. It'll be a good time. Yes. <laughs>